Good day everybody, it's been a bad hair day. It's still lockdown and the winter is here in Cape Town. Today's question that we're looking at is uh, from the November 2018 final exam. It is question 3.2. It was for 58 marks and the time that you should allocate yourself to complete this question is between 3 to 35 minutes. We're going to do it, try and do it in about 30 minutes. I'm going to upload a video in three sets of 10 minutes each. Um, just uh, to start off with, on the left hand side of the screen here is the question paper. This is um, basically a copy of the question paper. You can download it from the NSC website. On the right side of my screen, I've taken the answer book and I've replicated that onto my screen. So I've got both question and answer simultaneously displaying and um, easy for me to reference, easy for you to see what we're doing. What they wanted us to do in this question is a, uh, this is the question on financial statements. They wanted us to complete an income statement for the year ending 28 February 2018. They've provided us with uh, a skeleton framework already of the income statement. We have to complete a few bones here, see part of operating expenses. So I need to know that I'm going to find a few operating expenses which I will have to enter here into my income statement. And uh, these will most likely also be subject to some adjustments. And remember, when we do adjustments, we are going to create liabilities and assets as we go along to determine what income and what expenses were captured in this financial year so we can uh, ensure that we get the correct net profit at the end of the year. 3.2.2 they want us to do the note to the ordinary share capital and uh, they want us to also do the note to the retained income. Now as you know this question pretty much appeared always in your final exam so know this off by heart. When we share capital, we know we'll have a certain amount of shares at the beginning of the year for a certain total value. We will probably issue shares during the year. We will probably buy back shares during the year. That information will be captured in the note. Retained income, remember, retained income. What is retained income? It is a build, a build up of all of my net profits over a number of years of operating. So every year that we make a net profit, it will be added to our retained income. So you already know now, the first entry in my retained income is going to be the net profit after tax, so you can basically transfer that amount into your retained income. Sometimes we buy back shares, and we buy back shares at a price higher than the average share price. The difference between the price we pay and the average share price will um, be funded by retained income, so that amount will be subtracted here. We also pay our dividends to our shareholders, that is to say thank you for giving us money to share capital to do what we do, and uh, in return we and if the business does well, uh, they will issue and pay, declare and pay interim dividends. And if it does very well at the end of the year, they will probably declare and uh, sometimes pay final dividends. If the dividends have only been declared, it is a liability that has been created. And that liability, shareholders for dividends, we know we will put into the current liabilities. Um, of the balance sheet, which is question 3.2.3. They want us to do the equity and liability section of the balance sheet. Provided already is the shareholders equity, only share capital and retained income. These two amounts will come from the notes from question 3.2.2. So the total share capital at the end of the year is already provided. Retained income will be the total at the end of the year. And uh, that will be the amount. Non-current liabilities will be a loan. Current liabilities will be your trade and other payables, which are your creditors, and if there are adjustments for accrued uh, expenses, income that we've received in advance, etc. Sometimes we owe money to SARS at the end of the year. As mentioned earlier, I might owe money to shareholders for dividends that I've declared. And uh, if I have a long-term liability loan, and I pay off some capital part of that loan in the next financial year, that bit that I pay off will sit into my sit year under my current liabilities as the current section, current part of the long-term loan. So just in a nutshell, that's pretty much what we will do. How I'm going to try and do this in the next 10 minutes, try and complete all the information from A, work my way systematically through it, transfer the information over into my income statement, my notes, and my balance sheet.
So what they've given us here in the information, in information A, are all the balances and the totals at the end of 28 February. So at the end of 2018, I know I see I've got ordinary share capital closing balance of 8816000. In my ordinary share capital note, the closing balance, 1,480,000 ordinary shares at the end of the year to the value of 8,816,000. That information has already been provided. What they also give me is the opening value of my ordinary share capital. So I can go to my note, that same note. I'm going to say here, at the start of the year, a certain amount of ordinary shares on the 1st of March 2017, which was the start of the financial year, I had all of these share uh, the value of that amount sitting here in my opening balance of ordinary shares. I don't know yet how many shares it was. I'll get to that when I do. But what I do know is I've completed the information that they've provided me here for my ordinary share capital. I'm going to highlight it to tell myself that I've done it. What you can do is Scratch it out on your question paper. Secondly, retained income. Closing balance at the end of last year is my opening balance at the start of this year. Go to your retained income note. See what the opening balance is. 376600. That is the amount that they've supplied there. But they also supply here is a closing balance for my retained income. So I'm going to put this into my retained income note. Go to your closing balance at the end of the year for your retained income note. That is equal to 384600. Happy with that entry? Happy with that entry? What we also know is that the closing balance in the retained income and shareholders' capital will sit here in your balance sheet under shareholders' equity. We've already got the ordinary share capital amount that was given to us. Now we have the retained income amount. We've just been, we've just entered it from our note. So let's just copy that over as well. If there's no um, change to that, which then that will be our final amount. So let's go and scratch it out. I'm marking it off. Um, next up, loan, LSO Bank. What is a loan? This is a long-term liability. It's going to sit under my uh, non-current liabilities. So let's go to our non-current liabilities in our balance sheet and enter the information provided. Non-current liabilities. What is it? It is a loan from LSO Bank. And they've provided me there with an opening balance, which is my closing balance at the end of last year of 1725500. I'm going to just put it in here. So opening balance for my loan, opening balance for my loan, 1725500. I don't know what other information they've provided here. I'm going to mark it information moved over into my um, answer book. Next up, trade creditors. What are trade creditors? Trade creditors is a liability. So this will be displayed in my uh, balance sheet. Where will it be displayed? Trade creditors forms part of trade and other payables. So I'm going to add here, yeah, this amount is equal to trade creditors 414120. I'm going to go to trade and other payables. My trade creditors is 414120. And I'll move on to the next. What was that? Done. Next is SARS income tax provisional payments. Mm, this means I have paid SARS. This means we, I'm going to just do it here, we paid SARS provisional tax 341800. That means bank was credited and my account SARS income tax was debited. This account is a, a liability, meaning my liability was made less and my bank account went up. Anyway, it's got no bearing on what my income tax is. Remember, my income tax is going to be 28% uh, of my net profit before tax. So I'm going to just leave this open. I've made a note for myself here, what needs, what has happened here, so that I remember when I actually get to the note, because I saw when I scanned through it that there's a note on income tax. So I'll deal with it when I get there. Sales. What did they tell me about sales? There's no amount for sales. Go to my income statement, because sales is what we actually earn our revenue from. Have a look at your sales. There's no amount provided. No amount provided. Okay. I just quickly look at my adjustments. I see sale of goods. Blah, 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 blah. I see. Okay, there's information that they've provided me here. 
which will determine what my sales value is. So anyway, anything to do else now, scratch it out. Cost of sales. Cost of sales is what it, the trading stock that I've sold, what it cost me. Cost of sales, all right. 5600048560000 provided scratch it out total operating income this will also be in my income statement this is a total operating income is only my gross uh, profit plus my other operating oh uh, it is my other operating income um, 879440 that is provided to us so we can scratch it out next up salary what salary and wages salaries and wages you can call it an expense expenses will sit in our income statement yeah happy with that salaries and wages expense income statement it's a operating expense let's do 501 200 look at salaries and, oh it's already provided next up audit fees what are audit fees audit fees is an expense all my expenses will be displayed in my income statement remember my income statement should contain all the information of transactions applicable to this financial year because we want to determine the profit of this financial year so what i've done now is taken the audit fees which is an expense and opened it up in my income statement done next rent expense rent expense it tells you it is an expense so we can also go put this into our income statement say so rent expense the amount that we've paid so far during the year is 79240 and uh, there's probably going to be an adjustment director's fees what's our what are director's fees director's fees are also expenses and therefore also appear in our income statement let's just mark it i mean mark it say director's fees oops and the amount for my director's fees is 497800 next up sundry expenses also again income statement enter it into our income statement sundry expenses amount there is 91680 anything else there interest on fixed deposit so this should be in my income statement this is not an operating income i've made an investment somewhere and uh, an interest as a result of it interest uh, got to my income statement they've already provided me with interest income there's no amount there's no amount i'm happy with that there's probably going to be a note or it might be a balancing figure interest on loan again this is an expense but it's not an operating expense it's an expense that we incur as a result of borrowing money so we call it a financing expense uh interest expense should be lower on you just before my net profit on um before the tax interest expense amount your interest that i've paid on my loan is two four two five hundred so i'm going to just say two four two five hundred on balance there you can see the interest expense two four two five hundred okay so what is next next up will be my adjustments what i am going to do is i will to the adjustments in section two um, and I'll try and do adjustments A to E. See you just now.